I created a class which generates fake dates. And I want to show you how we can achieve the same functionality but by using a generator function. In order to do that we have to understand what this uh, demo here does. So we have a class called dateGenerator and it gets an initial timestamp and an interval. And um, then the idea is that whenever we call next we increment the initial timestamp by the interval. So for the start I choose a date which starts at midnight and then I choose an interval which is one minute long and one minute in milliseconds are 60,000 milliseconds. So when we create an instance of the class, this instance here, then we uh, give it the starting date and the interval and then when we call next it happens what I just explained. We um, have then one minute after midnight, two minutes after midnight and three minutes after midnight. So with every execution of next we'll get one more minute added to our date. So far so good. Let's write the same functionality but with a generator function. In order to create a generator function we just need to define a function of course, follow it by an asterisk and that's the special thing here. And then we need to give it a name. I call it generate date and we will pass in the same parameters that we have given to our class. So here in the class constructor we have the timestamp and we also passed the interval to the constructor. We'll uh, use the same variables for our function and then we will also increment the uh, timestamp so we need a variable for incrementing and here I will assign it with um, let so that we can count it up. And we start with zero and then I will use an infinite loop. This is usually dangerous in programming because it can lead to the fact that your computer gets stuck because it infinitely increments something or executes something. But there is a special thing with generator functions that we'll see in a bit. So first let us increment our variable. We'll do the same as before. We'll increment it by one. And then we'll use the code from the class just without calling the this keyword. And then the special thing that I told you about is the yield keyword. Because with the yield keyword inside of a generator function we can exit this function. And you can think of it as an early return. So instead of writing return we write yield and then we give it what we want to return. And we want to return the new date. So I will just copy that over. Of course the this cannot be used here because we are inside the function and not inside of um, a class member here. So, so far so good. And uh, let's check what happens when we make use of this function. To use it, of course, we have to call it and we call it with um, the start and the interval as um, just like as before and what we then get back is a generator object and this generator object automatically gets this or comes with this next function. So just by chance the um, API is actually the same. We uh, can call a next function and let's see what it will return to us. I will run yarn start because my project is set up in a way that uh, it will execute then this uh, start ts file and we see that we get almost the exact same values as before. So we have our dates and um, they are incremented so we have again one minute after midnight, two minutes after midnight, three minutes after midnight but we can see one major difference which is that instead of a plain string value we get back an object. And this object has two properties, a value property and another property called done. So why do we have an object with those two values? It's because our generator function returns us an iterator. 
and an iterator is actually defined by an object that has a next method which returns an object having a value and a done property. So we can also name our generator iterator. And this iterator here has these objects as defined and um, I will tell you why. So value is clear. Value is what is returned by the yield. And done is maybe not so clear, it's always false because we have an infinite loop here. So we can call it many many times and this uh, function here, this um, generator function will actually never be done. So it is infinitely busy when we call next again and again and um, this is something that can be useful because with this we can create infinite lists which is actually a good use case for generator function. It's when you want to generate an infinite amount of new values. What else is so cool about it? So we know that the generator object that got returned to us from the generator function is an iterator because it has this next function but it is also in iterable. What is in iterable? In iterable is an object that has a property of the key symbol iterator which also returns a generator function. That sounds quite confusing, you might find it quite confusing, but it's very cool and I will show you what um, is up with that. So, first of all, let's check what is um, so special still about our iterator, which is not just an iterator but also an iterable. And it is an iterable because when we check the type of our iterator and then the property symbol iterator, we'll, we will see that this will be a function. And we see that it is a function. So what's up with that? I will show you to understand that what is an iterable. As I said already, an iterable is just an object which has a property of the name symbol iterator. And the symbol iterator itself is also a function which is a generator function. And here I can copy what we wrote here and we will have an iterable. And we will see that this iterable can also be used the same way like our iterator has been used. So with this iterable we can access the symbol iterator property and then we actually get a generator function here in our hands and to this function we can say um, we also want to pass the start and the one minute in millis interval and then we will get back actually a new iterator const new iterator and with this iterator we can do the same as before we can use the iterator to then call next. And I will just remove the locks from before so that it doesn't get too overwhelming when running yarn start. And we see here that this uh, new iterator is behaving the same as the iterator that we got back from our generator function. So our generator function actually returns an iterator which is also iterable. Yeah? So there are these two things. Iterator is the one object that has a, a next method but um, when this object has also this um, property here then it's an iterator which is also an iterable. So it's an iterable iterator. <laughs> and um, 
this tells us something about our generator function because our generator function is not returning just a date it's returning an iterable iterator that gives back a date. So far so good. Why all the fuss? Yeah, why are we doing all of this? Like um, we have the same API as we had with the class. We have the next method and then if we call value here on the return value then we actually get back a plain string and that's what we had in the beginning. So why did we choose to convert our class to um, such an iterator? We did that because iterators can generate new values. Yeah, so they can generate an infinite amount of values. And when they are also iterable, then we can make use of them in for loops. Let me show you this. Let's say we have a for loop and we do const date off and now comes the key. Let me remove this my iterable and just uh, stick with the uh, iterator, our generator object. When we call const date of iterator, then we can log it to the console and you will see that we will get an infinite amount of new dates. Why is that? That's because we've seen that the next method of this iterator gives back an object with a done property. And this done property was always false in our case because we have an infinite loop here in our generator function. We can remove this infinite loop and we will replace it here for demo purposes with uh, increment lower than 10. So it will just run 10 times. And then we will see that when we call our program, that it will just output 10 dates. Yeah, we just have 10 increments now. And um, we can achieve the same by also calling the next function 10 times. Let me do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then we can see that our iterator here returns an object with done false, done false, done false. We execute it 10 times. Let us uh, execute it uh, one more time so that we have 11 runs. And on the 11th, we see that the value is undefined and it's finally done because here there is no more yield. Yeah, We yielded all the values and that's something you have to be aware of because if we go back to our for loop for const state of iterator, we can return all the values. But once we returned all of them, there won't be no more values. So if we try to run another round of this for loop, we'll see that uh, nothing will happen. Yeah? We will just see the output from the first run, but the second run doesn't have anything anymore for us. So we need to be aware that once it yielded all the values, there are no more values. And uh, we see now that it's very convenient to use a for loop with an iterator, but you can also use it to spread all its values. So if I, for example, do this, then I will get back an array that contains all our 10 dates. Now we see here the array and it includes 10 dates. And again, if we do it a second time, we will get an empty array because we yielded all the values in our first run. So what else is special? It's special that you can also do operations after the yield. So instead of incrementing this number here in the beginning, I can also do it 
after the yield. And then when we run iterator.next for the first time, it will just um, execute until the yield. And if we run it a second time, we will then continue after the yield and go again until the yield. We can see this by just adding a lock. So if I put a lock statement here, I will just be very uncreative and call it lock. Then we won't see the lock by just one execution. Yeah, there is no lock. But if we do it a second time, it will continue after the yield and then lock to the console. So here we have the first run, first the sequence, then we see the lock, and then second sequence. Okay, so now you know how to build a generator function. You also learned that a generator function returns a generator, and a generator is an object that has the properties of an iterator and an iterable. Having the property of an iterator means that um, it's an object having a next method, which returns the exact object that has a, a done and a value property. Yeah, this makes um, an object an iterator. And um, being an iterable means that there is this symbol iterator property defined. And that's all you need to know to um, get started with generator functions. Please make sure that in your TypeScript configuration you have set the target to ES6 because generator functions are a concept of ECMAScript 6.